Hello everyone, I guess you know hopefully you're having a wonderful day and today we are here with a video on why I as an American have fallen in love with collecting soccer cards. Uh, a pretty odd pairing, uh, naturally considering I call them soccer cards rather than uh, football cards, football stickers, what else have you. A pretty positive video, you know, a little bit of a pump piece for myself and just the soccer hobby in general and why I find it so amusing. But let's go ahead and get into it. I'll give you a brief history on myself because I know everyone was asking, but I think it's important. Um, to start, as a kid, I did play Pokemon. Well, I didn't play Pokemon. I collected Pokemon, and I did play Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, so I did have some experience with card games and that type of thing. Uh, I had odd and end baseball cards lying around, but I was really never that big of a fan of them, considering, you know, I'd open a pack, not really know anyone in there, throw them off to the side, and, you know, think about them later, if ever again. As a sports fan, like I mentioned, I did enjoy baseball, and that was my love as a kid. Uh, eventually, Considering I'm in Ohio, uh, LeBron comes around and, you know, I sort of transition into basketball. I know quite a bandwagon there from Yankees to LeBron, but uh, yeah, my dad was a Yankees fan and, you know, I really enjoyed LeBron and sort of the uh, excitement he brought to Cleveland. So, nonetheless, uh, enjoyed those for a good while until the 2014 World Cup hit and that's sort of when the shift started to really take place um, with the likes of Clint Dempsey and the amazing goals that he scored at that World Cup, along with the moment of John Brooks scoring a game winner against Ghana essentially in the final 10 minutes, Tim Howard's amazing uh, performance against Belgium in the knockout stage is ultimately not a crazy World Cup in terms of performance going out in the first knockout round, but getting out of the group of death and, you know, at least competing against Belgium was... Uh, an incredible time. I enjoyed it immensely, and that was really what solidified what was going to eventually be my love for soccer. From there, I enjoyed some FIFA and the Ultimate Team side of things uh, early on. I, I would say I joined probably back here, FIFA 12, 13 range, uh, and then continued onward up until about 2021. I was naturally falling out of the game of FIFA, but I had already sort of had my, you know, enjoyment of cards and the market that they have there and building a team, but the problem was is every single year, you know, it obviously gets reset and you have to do the whole thing over again. That's obviously a huge ask of people considering they just spent a year building their team, but most people just go along with it and enjoy the game as is. Eventually I got pretty burnt out and decided that sports cards were my thing. I was aided by a friend, he uh, mentioned it to me around the start of COVID. I'd like to think that even if it wouldn't have been start of COVID, I would have got into it. My life didn't wildly change when COVID hit, so had my friend talked to me a little earlier about it, I think it would have been the same. Um, he was also into cards for, you know, five, ten years at least before he got me into them. Um, but for some reason, we just never brought it up together until, you know, the beginning of 2020. And from there, it was an instant hit for me. Like most Americans, I did start out buying basketball, baseball, football. I bought those for a few months before ultimately buying my first soccer card. And within a year after buying my first soccer card, uh, I turned at least, you know, 90% of my PC into soccer. Now it's almost exclusively soccer, um, you know, except for some odd and end things that I like collecting. But in terms of sports, it's exclusively soccer. So now we know why I got here, or how that has managed to happen. But what's kept me here? Because just because you find out about something and just because you buy a few soccer cards doesn't mean that you're going to stick with it and truly enjoy it for the long run, right? For me, one of the biggest factors has to be the Easter egg hunt nature that comes along with soccer cards. It is just an incredibly diverse distribution of all of the soccer cards over a century plus. You have these cards scattered everywhere from the cards that I just showed you before. You know, they're a little bit grouped up in Germany, not gonna lie. Not a ton going on in Africa and Asia, of course, because, you know, not the richest of football and cultures. Of course, they have, you know, their players here and there. But for the most part, this is going on in South America and Europe. And also, uh, I, I did put up one modern card right here in the bottom right. So you can't yell at me if you say that I hate modern because I don't. There's a card there. And trust me, I have many more, but I don't think that modern cards are necessarily the uh, the best example of something being dispersed all over the world. Although, to be fair, it now has more reach than ever, right? Like these cards, say for instance, this Galactic could be in Europe, could be in Asia, could be in America. I mean, it could be almost anywhere. 
But in terms of going backwards, I do find that fun because you have to go back to the country they were released in because there's not that universal distribution, of course. Say, for instance, this Bobby Charlton up in the UK. Um, you know, you're not going to find copies of that down in Brazil, just like you're not going to really find any copies of, say, uh, the Titulares or the Americana over in Germany because that's just not the way it works. So you have to go to the places of origin and sort of search it out from there. Now, of course, you know, the cards do get moved around. I bought a lot of these from America from an auction house, but they still have such rich history in regards to their origins, the players, the sets, the releases. It's just, it's so rich and I enjoy it immensely. I find that much more enjoyable than the American model of collecting, where essentially you have a country wide distribution of a card for a country wide demand. Um, the scales are relatively even in the sense that the people that want it have it uh, at least for a certain time being and eventually if more people want it then that demand sort of you know overtakes supply but for the most part it's a pretty even ratio and it's not all that thrilling to buy something from a couple states over as opposed to say you know buying something from germany or south america it just has a lot more pizzazz to it Going back to this picture, uh, say for instance this San Giorgio right here, I really like the set, think it's amazing, uh, it's released for Italy. So basically, you know, the supply released meets a 1960s demand within Italy, which presumably, you know, decent demand, but as time goes on, there's much more of a chance that worldwide demand will overtake whatever sort of countrywide supply there was for certain issues, right? Now it's going to depend on which issue, which player, all of that. But ultimately, it's working much more in your favor in the sense that there's not as much supply compared to the typical demand. Now, of course, with soccer, you have to be careful. You have to understand sort of the intricacies of it. Uh, you can't just buy everything blindly like any other sport just because it's, you know, not distributed to the max uh that doesn't necessarily mean it's just a buy but it does make things much more enticing right in terms of supply demand dynamics i just find it much more reassuring to have a countrywide distribution from one year you know 30 40 50 however many years ago uh to be much more appealing than say a massive united states release for a tops card that's produced to the moon and wasn't meant to be destroyed like a lot of these stickers i have up on screen to be fair these down in south america are one so they have been removed but most of the other ones are pretty high grade because they haven't been stuck and that in and of itself is rare right uh, most cards well stickers in particular are meant for albums so they're meant to be practically destroyed upon placement and so to think that you know you're picking out a card from say one year 60 years ago that wasn't destroyed and has made it through everything it's incredibly slim odds and for me that's much more of a chase that's much more appealing to go after than say something that's a, a mass-produced tops card in america that i've seen time and time and time again in conjunction with that, since these are scattered all over the world, I do find the thrill of the hunt to be much more enticing. Um, you have to really, you know, dig a lot deeper. Again, like I mentioned with American grails, quote unquote, most American grails in different sports are very attainable. It's more a question of, do you have the financial backing to do so? Um, while in soccer, there are so many examples of items that you are going to have more trouble finding than trouble purchasing. Most soccer items are not tremendously pricey, right? The bigger issue, at least for certain ones, is going to be just finding it in the first place and having access to be able to purchase it. And to me, that's a much more exciting thing. Um, maybe also given that I'm younger, you know, I don't have the massive backing of capital to just go out and buy everything. So if I can put in my time and that can be a replacement for some of that financial backing, that's great. You know, if I can go out and find these things online, if I can source them, source the people, all that jazz, you know, that's a much more appealing process for me uh, especially in combination of having to you know go through this hunt a lot of people think collecting is just about getting the card and then staring at the card but a good part of collecting is also going out there and chasing for it right and say for instance here there's just so many different ways of doing it with soccer it can be uh, at times somewhat demanding and maybe even burdensome um, but at the same time it makes it incredibly refreshing in terms of hunting like up here i just put 10 or 15 of the more common ways that you would go about searching these things but it does sort of give you this elusive everlasting hunt and so many different methods of going about it so many different countries it's just endlessly exciting in my opinion 
In addition to that, I love that you can travel countries and eras through cardboard. Um, some sports just don't have that sort of lineage, but soccer is far from it. It's deep roots across the globe, and they're all sort of doing their own thing considering they're you know, wasn't much crossover at the time. So say, for instance, we start off early days, or I guess more modern days with, say, 2014 Prism set. Um, you know, pretty iconic set. Also one that sort of lays the groundwork for years to come. Um, we could go back a few decades then, sort of see 70s Argentina, where you have pretty nice colors going on, um, some pretty psychedelic looks, along with uh, just some great use of pogs as well, uh, sort of get an idea of their collecting culture, where pogs are much more of a commonplace item compared to, say, the typical sticker or card. And that's a unique feature of South America, in particular Argentina. From there, you want to look through other grades. You can look at 50s Brazil. Again, just rich colors, rich collecting history. Brazil is absolutely littered uh, with collecting of soccer. And, you know, even very niche releases, some widely available, varying levels, uh, but nonetheless, very great designs and a very good era as well, of course, when you compare it with a Pele rookie. And then one of my favorites is 1920s Spain, where you have some of the best-looking art-style cards that I could actually pick out from all the soccer in my opinion from my point of view it's almost unparalleled i don't know if there's anything quite like it um but it really puts you in a time and a place and you can tell at least you know if you spend enough time in it you can almost tell what country what era you're in just by looking at the collectible in front of you and to me that's very exciting because you're almost traveling time and country just by going through these issues and that is something that's very very riveting as opposed to say maybe an american style where you're just looking at tops card after tops card after tops card and not a whole lot's really changing so for me i find the sense of exploration in soccer cards to be unmatched in terms of american sports cards i don't think that there's really uh a candle to be held up against soccer at this point from that perspective. Taking the example of looking through eBay for Topps baseball cards, you know, they're just too similar. I love some continuity, don't get me wrong. I love a great legacy brand for a sport. I think it's very important. I think that's why, you know, baseball is what it is. I mean, Topps is synonymous with baseball and that's huge for it. But at the same time, from a collecting perspective is someone that's looking back on this now 50 to 100 years ago and saying what do i want to buy well buying a tops card from this year tops card from that year tops card from every year doesn't really excite me to the fullest and you know in addition i didn't really bring this up but you know baseball is so so searched through i mean it is top to bottom been explored uh, almost every single crevice. Of course, there's still things going on in between, but it's nowhere near the level of soccer where soccer feels much more bare bones while baseball's as as fleshed out as possible. I mean, look at this Jackie Robinson. We have a PSA 2 Tops card. goes for 6300 right? 6300 in soccer could practically buy you any single card out there uh, if you're willing to get it in low grade, and you could even get it in high grade most of the time. It's just an entirely different atmosphere, and for me, not really... Uh, even a question, to be honest, between, say, something like baseball and soccer in terms of what I'd rather collect. For me, soccer just feels so much more grassroots in terms of me being able to get down and dirty and really, you know, dig into the collecting history and be along for the ride of its creation in terms of a global culture, right? I think that collecting is something that we as Americans have done very heavily, um, but even, you know, across the globe, they've done well with soccer. Like the UK, for example, is so incredibly rich in terms of collecting. We just really haven't been able to connect and exchange ideas for long periods of time, and thus the collecting scene for soccer isn't as global, isn't as united, but I feel like at some point in time we will hit that, but we're still a long ways off, and so there's just tons of people all doing their own digging in their own niches, and it's much more organic and sort of innocent than a lot of the American sports, and I enjoy that greatly. For me, it is just simply so much more exciting, so much more fun, so much more rewarding to be able to explore the open seas that are soccer cards across the globe rather than doing something of the like of strolling into your local American sports card show where every single table has the same cards, spending whatever money you had on a card that you could find at every other booth, but you're just trying to get it for 5 to $10 less than wherever, and just being another one in a crowd, right? When I go to these American sports card shows, I never find any soccer, especially any good soccer, right? You might find the odd and end base cards, but 
you know, I leave these shows knowing that, like, no one, absolutely no one, is really collecting soccer on a large scale. And to me, that is pretty rewarding in the sense that, you know, it shows that what I'm doing is pretty unique and has its own path, really, in terms of collecting. It's not the cookie-cutter, same sort of format that you see across other sports. It's already been tried and true and played out, right? Some people like that type of stuff. For me, I'm not as convinced. I think that for sports cards, the top three or four all being primarily American-based sports makes sense from the perspective of us, you know, being such a rich collecting culture and having some of the, you know, best sports leagues in the world. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like as we sort of enter this new age, I'd much rather be on the side of the global game, collecting things that are very niche, very hard to find, and scattered everywhere, rather than, again, strolling up into my local card show and buying the same card that I've seen 50 to 100 other people have and just being another one in a crowd it's it's not really appealing to me but yeah that's gonna be it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed a little bit of a fun one for me just wanted to go ahead and uh, explain why I'm having so much fun in soccer cards why it's really stuck for me and uh, maybe see what you guys are thinking down below in the comments if you'd like to share would love to hear if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like if you want to see more videos like this as soon as I go live make sure to subscribe but with that said hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh, peace